Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of the Europa League final which was a highly entertaining overall affair. It was not the greatest of finals. Um, I think in the end I'm not sure if it really deserved a winner. Uh, although for most of the time I think my overall feeling was that Frankfurt had a little bit more idea of how they want to play. But we're kind of sloppy in the builder play, whereas Rangers uh, kind of anticipated Frankfurt trying to hit them with their slick attacking and very direct um, uh, soccer and were defensively really, 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 really sound. And uh, it took me a while to, to actually get to that, but I, I really thought that uh, in ball control and ball possession and in attacking play, Frankfurt was definitely the better team. However, when it comes to uh, tackling, physicality, uh, winning the ball and defending well, this was all Rangers. And so it was in that sense a rather even final. I found a little bit the uh, pregame um, not only misleading but wrong in the, in, 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 in the end when it was described to Giovanni Frank Broncos lets uh, Rangers play a Dutch style uh, offensive attack. And I was thinking, nah, I've seen them against Leipzig and so this doesn't ring true, but it was always in the back of my mind. I'm waiting for Rangers to come. Uh, but no, they needed to play this way because uh, if you open up a little bit more against this Frankfurt side, who were not as clinical as they were, uh, say, in Barcelona or against West Ham, um, but if you open up, you really open yourself up uh, for trouble. In the end, it went to penalties where... Gary Lineker's uh, Bomo uh, <laughs> came through. The, the Germans always win in a penalty shootout. Although I get it, it was it was almost a carbon copy uh, in the sense how it was set up of, of the FA Cup final. Uh, if you've watched my video uh, yesterday, where I, where I said, I mean, the advantage for Rangers were that they're going first. This usually as gives you 60 to 40 percent advantage. However, it was already a little bit undone by shooting in front of your own fans. And I know this is counterintuitive and I, and, and I think they have taken the overall decision out of the player's hands and let the really the coin flip decide, as you saw with the referee, more on him later. Um, so the referee said, okay, if the coin comes up this way, we play to the Rangers end, otherwise we play to the Frankfurt end. Uh, it turned out to be in front of the Rangers end. So um, similar to Chelsea, going first in front of their own fans, do not win it. Similar goes it for Rangers. Although... I think there were nine perfect penalties. And the only one that was savable got saved. I think Trapp was there. About, I mean, I always had the feeling that uh, going into a penalty shootout, just, and you know, I usually look at the goalkeepers more so than uh, the takers. I mean, yes, it's maybe a bit one sided, but I gotta say, um, Kevin Trapp is an excellent, excellent goalkeeper. And I knew that with that. Uh, Frankfurt do have a slight advantage. Uh, if he gets, he, he's easier to get to a to a to to to, to, to ball than um, McGregor. I think it was for Rangers. So yeah, uh, those were kind of the first few thoughts on the, on on the game. It was a very special final because you knew the Europa League is very often derided, especially by the bigger teams. And you know most of the teams back there that I have. Oh, I would say the typical Champions League teams a little bit have a sneer, especially the fans and especially the pundits. And I have to say, especially the English speaking world. I think um, unless you're a Bayern supporter, the Europa League in the German speaking uh, world is very well regarded as a competition worth winning, as you saw with Dortmund, who actually said, we want to win this tournament. And then they got ousted by Rangers. Um, but I also feel a similar feeling uh, abides in Italy. I'm not so sure about Spain, because Spain do, uh, do tend to win it. Um, but that was the other uh, thing. So it meant a real, it meant to both teams a lot, because this was a unique chance for them to lift the European trophy. And while uh, Frankfurt is from nominally a big nation, within that nation, they are not a big team. They are a very well supported team. But they are not a huge team in there, uh, meaning they haven't won any title since '59, any um, championship that is. Although they probably should have won it in '92, but uh, that's a completely different story there. So uh, 
Frankfurt is a very well supported team, but it's not uh, in terms of title in, by any stretch of the Im Im imagination a huge team. And for Rangers, they are probably a huge team in Scotland, but they are not uh, in the European context a huge team at least anymore unfortunately. So uh, it really meant a lot for the fan bases. They were, both fan bases brought a lot uh, into a stadium that held only for uh, around 40,000. Um, yes, the Scots were in, had an advantage uh, over, over, over that. I think it was two to one. Uh, I think they said 150,000 and about 100,000 were Rangers fans. Um, it I was hoping as it was largely a peaceful affair. There were some troubles with Frankfurt Ultras uh, late at night that got arrested, but those were only few, uh, far and few between. Um, it was more that both fan bases were really enjoying uh, each other's company there. And you saw it and act actually the respect that the Frankfurt uh, fans uh, paid to the Rangers uh, team and the supporters uh, during the victory ceremony when they were clapping all out. So uh, in that sense, it was really, really special. I think that uh, from, you know, while watching TV, um, I always felt that um, Frankfurt support, although they were a little bit less, I mean, they basically had only towards the right side of the goal, there was a clear Frankfurt section, and then it was kind of mixed, and then uh, the, the more, uh, about half a stadium, I would say it was clearly in uh, Rangers territory, uh, whereas um, I, I, I would give Frankfurt at most a quarter of the stadium, something like that. So, you know, it, it, it was all there. But that's a, that really hardcore base had a very choreographed support and, uh, you know, all those songs that I know from going to the stadium here in Linz as well. So I, all, I, I always felt they could make, especially in the first half, they made their presence felt. However, in the second half, I think it evened out because the, the tension of the game got to everybody. Uh, I think it is time that we also go a little bit into the game and I have to start by slamming the ref. Uh, whatever he did, especially in the first half, and it went right up until Rangers took the lead. I, he swallowed the whistled warner. And it was already in the fourth minute when Sebastian Rode is hit on the head. I, I think it was by Lundström, bleeding from there. I don't want to necessarily call for a red, but if you see any replay, it's a dangerous play. There should have been at least a yellow. I mean, a yellow is an absolute must. This referee was afraid of making any decisions. They were hard tackles from both sides, where if you give an early yellow card, I think it would have been very, very, very well deserved there. Uh, I did not understand the refereeing by one bit. This was uh, one of the most timid refereeing that I have seen. And it came to a head, and I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit now, um, in the second half, but I really feel there was a clear penalty foul on Rafa Bore. Yes! He embellishes on the fall, but if you look especially on the behind the goal camera, you clearly see there was contact there. To me, at least, if you don't give it, at least you have to walk to the screen and watch this for yourself. That's all I'm asking for. And then if you make a decision that's not a penalty, it's, it's good. I know there were four pers uh, pers perspectives, but there were two where I have to say, there is no ball in play by the Rangers defender. It is clearly yeah, as a touch on Rafael Boré. Now, if this is enough or not, I think I have seen this very often given. Uh, this was a letter for Rangers right there. Um, but, you know, there were a few, as, as, as I said, uh, Rangers, especially in the first 25 minutes, and um, it took five minutes out of those because uh, Rode needed to be uh, bandaged up. And, fun, fun, and, and funnily enough, uh, he got bandaged up in both teams' colors. He had first the blue and then the white over. So it basically was the Europa League final on his head. And uh, can I also say, I was flabbergasted. I heard yesterday afternoon, I read it, that uh, Frankfurt is going to play in white. And I really want to know if you know where I can find this information, because I always look at the UEFA pages and so on when I make my previews. You never find the information in what jerseys they're playing. And I think this is, for me, one of the, the most interesting ones. What colors are they, are they playing? But you go to the club's web pages, you go anywhere, you cannot find that info. Please, please inform me. If you have any way uh, that uh, I can figure out uh, let's ahead of time because I don't, I don't think that Frankfurt decides on the day of the final. I really don't. Frankfurt played in white. 
which was a surprise. But um, then I was thinking about, yeah, they uh, beat West Ham as well as Barcelona in that jersey. It's probably the best looking jersey of them all. I also have to say it's a really, really stylish jersey. And uh, while I got that one last season, uh, and it was the cheap, uh, the cheaper version. I do regret uh, not getting the white one because I really think that this white one is an excellent, excellent, beautiful jersey. I would even say this one looks better than the Roma jer jer jersey that ever, ever, everyone got so crazy about. So it's an excellent jersey. Uh, so that I un understand. I also think, given that the heat in Seville, I mean, it was I think 37 degrees centigrade or Celsius uh, um, at kickoff or some or something like that. Playing in white in that heat, although there was not so much sun anymore, actually makes sense. You see it uh, if you watch American football, football, football especially early on uh, when it's still warm in the south uh, in September and October, that all the home teams play in white to have the away team play in the dark units because uh, it absorbs the heat more. So uh, for that reason, I think uh, the choice of white also made sense and it made over for a visually pleasing file. I think white against blue always looks nice. Although I think if Frankfurt would have played in black shorts and the Rangers then play in white and uh, play in their home kit, uh, that would also have been nice. I read an article that whenever Rangers do not uh, do a little bit twitch in European finals with their overall look, they lose. Because the only time that they won, that's the one where they, where, where, where they played. Uh, back then, they had for once decided they will take they play in Red Sox. So that's the uh, against Dynamo Moscow. I think they had just switched that season from the traditional black with the red turn to turn over to uh, red with white turn to turn over. But that's one where they played in the full home kit. That's the one time that they won. And the, um, yesterday, of course, they played in all blue. Did it turn out? Make of it whatever you want. Uh, the Frankfurt fans definitely want to have white. And uh, speaking of that, the supporters all were all in white. And I even like that um, they put over the UEFA branding. They put all this white uh, sheet to have this all white um, <laughs> uh, corner of the stadium. So uh, that was really nice. But going back to the game, I really thought that the first... Um, First half, largely, especially uh, except for the last 15 minutes, was characterized by Frankfurt having really good ideas in attacking, but being sloppy in uh, finishing. And I especially Lindstrom uh, a few times uh, really had bad miss hits. Yes, he just was rushed in and and so, but he had a few good situations where I think you have to get the ball and goal. I thought I thought also that Ansgar Knauf was a little bit overly motivated. Uh, Kostic though was brilliant. Uh, as was Kamada, although he also was trying to a little bit too fancy, but for, for me those were the two best Frankfurt players uh, going forward. But it settled then, uh, the longer the half went, went on, uh, I think the heat uh, was playing a factor there as well, because um, Frankfurt could not keep the tempo up high, and then the Rangers at the end of the first half for, for actually got a little bit towards goal as well. Uh, second half started the same way, then there was this parallel situation with Frankfurt really pressing. And then uh, with one error, Tuta tripping up, um, suddenly it is Aribo uh, free on goal and putting it in internet. At that point, I really thought it was against the run of play, but again, um, it took me then a little bit back and um, I will talk about it in a, in a, in a sec. I found myself uh, really cheering more for Frankfurt. This was not against the Rangers, it was really more for Frankfurt because of the personal backstory that I have with that team. And so, um, you know, th uh, therefore it, your viewpoint is a little bit shaded, although I was not going. When Arribo scored, I said, oh, that's interesting, yeah, that's cool. Uh, maybe Rangers Rain, Rain is going to come in it. I mean, it would, it would be nice as well. But overall, I gotta say, I was maybe a tad more for Frank. For, for Frank, I was, I was not devastated. I just thought a little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit against the run of play. And then, uh, because I had maybe a little bit of Frankfurt classes, it took me a while to kind of sit back and say, actually, Rangers is playing really well. They're just not doing much offensively. But from what they can bring, the physicality and the defensive uh, structure, they are really, really well. And whenever Frankfurt attacked, it looked messy. And that goal really hit Frankfurt for a while. Really, uh, they needed a good 10 minutes to uh, compose themselves. And then uh, Tuta, who actually tripped, had to come off as well because of the trip. Uh, he injured her. Hasebe came on and he almost gifted for Ra uh, Rangers a second goal. Um, however, the equalizer then came through an absolutely brilliant assist by Kostic from the side. where You see Rafael Boré working between the defenders. 
kind of expecting the cross right at the time and then taps it in with the uh, with the uh, lower side of his foot uh, from point blank range. But the, the cross came out, out from the uh, touchline, cross in and right in. Uh, in the, in the juncture where the goalie cannot really come out, but the defenders also, it, it, it was a brilliantly played ball. That assist was absolutely brilliant. And as I said, Kostic was tireless, literally working. He was my player of the um, uh, final in many ways. Um, then, you know, there were a few changes. Hauge came, came on, uh, didn't amount for much. He tried a lot, but he also, like uh, Lind Lindstrom before, he never got in the sh shooting position, but whatever whatever he tried, there was maybe a brilliant touch. Uh, it worked and then it, it, it quickly fell apart. And the uh, same thing can be said for Jakic when Sebastian, when he came on for Sebastian Rode, and, you know, the guy with the turban up there. But it was actually Rangers late on uh, that had a little bit more the upper hand, especially to, uh, in the last 10 minutes, uh, including stoppage time. I really thought that Rangers then had the upper hand um, and probably had gone for equalizer. I think there was a free kick very late on. Uh, or was this at the end of the overtime? Well, 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 well but there was. Uh, there, it was not that they had big chances. I think they had only a second good chance, but um, they had a little bit the upper hand. Going into overtime, so 90 minutes, I think Frankfurt were overall the better team. But going into overtime, it was then definitely a little bit more Rangers. The game was a whole lot more even and very late on. Rangers had a point blank chance, and now I forgot the player who had it. Um, uh, I should have I should have looked that that uh, that one up. Um, I think it was Davis, but I'm I'm not one hundred percent. We are highly trap safety. I mean, when you saw the ball coming there, um, it was just how can you miss that one? The how trap safe that one? That was the save of the evening. That was the one really, really clear chance. I mean, I even thought that the Aribo goal that uh, Trapp could have probably uh, done a little bit better, but I, I think he was speculating towards the other side as well. So, okay, uh, you know, a one-on-one, one -on -one, always the attacker has the advantage, but in that one, yeah, that was a big save. And then it goes to Pals, they already talked about it. Um, Aaron Ramsey, who came on, I mean, uh, he came on for, uh, it says Zach Sasakala, although he is Jersey Fashion Junior, which I really, really love. I gotta say those Rangers jerseys are growing on me. I, I didn't like like them in, initially, but uh, they are growing on me, to be honest. Um, he came on particularly for the palace shooter. That never, that never bodes well. And I thought that uh, Aaron Ramsey is one of those players that uh, he is so in decline. Whenever he went to Juventus, yeah, he had the occasional good game. But yeah, at Rangers, as far as I know, he didn't do much and his penalty was the one that was not very well uh, taken. I actually thought to a, to a, to a degree Kamado's penalty, uh, who went in by the, um, uh, by the post, and I think Roof's uh, the last one for, for Rangers as well. Those were actually almost the best because there's no way they're gonna. And for Kamada, I actually believe that, that he was aiming for there. Uh, of course, uh, personally, I prefer the Rafa Bore penalty going right up in, 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 into the corner. Now, I did not like that Lenz and Rustic, the first two takers. Uh, I know this is something they know they ever boot, how they were whistly, uh, uh, trying to shut up the crowd. I always feel this, is, this gets unnecessary uh, attention there. Stay concentrated on what you're doing. And let your action speak. Don't get involved with the crowd. That's just how I feel overall. So yeah, Frankfurt win it. Oliver Glasner wins it. Uh, and that's where the last one. This is a triumph made in Upper Austria. The entire coaching staff, the entire, co I mean, the main coaching staff, let's, uh, let, let's say that way, of Eintracht Frankfurt, all come from Upper Austria. All have slight last connection, but also con uh, connected to especially S. Farid. Maybe Klaasa is more known as an S. Farid player as well as his co coach, uh, co trainer Anger Schmidt. They were a long time S. Farid players. However, um, although there's a rivalry there, uh, they are now seen very positively by Lusk because, of course, they were four years with Lusk and really lifted Lusk up. Uh, got them in the Bundesliga and to the uh, 2019 uh, finishing second place. And that's when it happened that for the first time in ages, a German team took an Austrian coach from an Austrian team. And that was Oliver Glasner from Lask, uh, which showed the good work that has been done. And the work that he has been done and that the work he has been doing at Wolfsburg and the work that he's been doing now at Eintracht Frankfurt, although it's only one year, 
Oliver Klausner is an excellent, excellent coach and I really wish him only the best because on top of that, he's a very down-to-earth guy. I mean, uh, I, I remember watching an interview before the last uh, season with Lusk when, uh, you know, he said, I'm really happy here. Uh, and unless there comes an irresistible offer from, uh, from outside of Austria, I feel very much at home here. And I think this is also the reason why uh, he went then from Wolfsburg to Frankfurt, because Frankfurt is closer to home. So he's a very down-to-earth guy. I, uh, even as a player for Reed, I never had anything negative to say about him. Uh, the one thing is that he uh, was once as a player at Lusk, where he had a year where he was almost always injured. And that didn't work out, but then he came back as a coach and did really, really well. And I should not forget the third one on the coaching team is Ronny Brunmeier. Uh, also, he went to all upper Austrian big teams from uh, blau Linz to Ried to Lusk, played for all of them, scored goals there, and he's also on the coaching stuff. So uh, there is a certain local pride attached to it. And that Oliver Glasner is the first Austrian coach to win a European title since 1983 and Tuppel. And the hard work that he's putting in and all the sacrifices that he's making totally 100% uh, deserved. Uh, he's now a hero for in Hamburg, uh, in Hamburg, in Frankfurt forever. Hamburg, of course, was when um, Ernst Happel played. So from that point of view, this is why I was more for Frankfurt. Uh, because that story is really amazing and I really like Oliver Glasner as a person and I think as a coach. He is very, very underrated. I actually think that he would be one that could. So, uh, he has the potential to take a really big team in, in Germany and take them far. And I'm talking rather a Dortmund than a Leipzig. Really, he's that good. He's that good. Thoughts on the Europa League final? Uh, as I said, a triumph made in Upper Austria, which is the thing I really cannot believe. Uh, I think it was overall, it was not any uh, great final, but there was a lot of suspense. There was a lot of action there and it was a true fans final. That is what I take away from this final and that we have now Eintracht Frankfurt in the Champions League next season uh, to top it off. And I would have said the same thing for Rangers. It just uh, makes this cup competition a success. It was overall uh, really entertaining. I think uh, interesting conference league actually lifted the Europa League up. Now we have only eight groups. It makes it all a little bit more, um, how, how to say, uh, manageable. And there's a really good stuff happening there. So I would like to know what you thought about the Europa League final. Um, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!